Good morning, Essex. This is your English Walt. Write complex sentences. And today's date, which is Friday the 8th of January 2021. Could you please put that in your books? In blue pen, underline with a ruler. You can pause the video while you do that. All right, today we're going to have a look at complex sentences. So first of all, it's a good idea to think about what a sentence is. Now, a sentence, every sentence, every sentence has at least one main clause. Another way to think about that is every sentence has at least one thing which is the most important. Okay, so let's think of a nice example. Peter was hungry. It has a capital letter, it has a full stop, it's a complete sentence. It's a very boring sentence, but it's a sentence all the same. Remember, a sentence can be either a statement, it can be a command, it can be a question, or it can be an exclamation. So every sentence has at least one clause. The clause here is, Peter was hungry. It's giving you some information. Done. However, to make these sentences more interesting and to have more detail, we can use what's called a complex sentence. A complex sentence has a main clause, it also has an extra bit of information, it has an extra bit of information which is less important and we call that a subordinate clause. Subordinate is just a fancy word for less important. Quite often you hear, especially if you hear people talking about the army, you hear someone say, he is my subordinate. It's the opposite of superior. It means less important or a lower rank. Okay. So, a complex sentence has one main clause, Peter is hungry, and at least, it can have two or three, and at least one subordinate, remember subordinate, less important, clause. What I'd like you to do is pause the video at this point and copy down these things. So this is a grammar lesson, so if you'd like to use highlighters and different colour pens to make sentence and complex sentence look a bit bigger, to make it a bit better for revision, then please do. So pause the video and copy this down. OK. If we go back to... our original sentence, which was, Peter was hungry. That's our main clause, remember? Peter was hungry. Now I can add an extra bit of information there, which is less important. The main point here is that Peter was hungry. That's what I want to say. I want to say Peter was hungry. But I could say Peter was hungry because he forgot his lunch. Peter was hungry because he forgot his lunch. Here we have the main clause. Peter was hungry. And then the less important bit, but it's quite nice. It makes our sentence more interesting and it gives us more information because he forgot his lunch. Okay, so that's the secondary bit of information. The second bit of information. What you can do, the nice thing about subordinate clauses to make a complex sentence, is that you can actually write it at the beginning. You can delete it and change your mind and put it at the beginning. Because Peter was hungry, sorry, because he forgot his lunch. P 
Peter was hungry. Okay, it's exactly the same sentence. Just to change the order. This is still the subordinate clause. This is still the less important piece of information. And this is still the main clause. The most important bit. The only difference is that if I put my subordinate clause at the beginning, I need to add a little comma just to split it up. Okay? So, complex sentences has a main clause and at least one subordinate clause. The subordinate clause can go at the beginning or at the end. If it's at the beginning, it quite often needs a comma. Sometimes you can use a comma to um, add the second bit as well. So, um, no, we won't get. We'll, we'll move on to that later. I don't want to confuse you. So another example is uh, Bath is an old city. Okay, its main clause works well on its own. To make that into a complex sentence, we need to add a subordinate clause. Built in the Roman times. Bath's an old city. Main clause, built in the Roman times, subordinate clause. Unlike before, we can change that around. So the subordinate clause at the beginning. Built in the Roman times. Now remember, we need to add a comma now. Bath is an old city. It's entirely up to you which order you put those in. You can put the subordinate clause first, or the main clause first. It's just a matter of preference to see which one you prefer. So now our main clause is here, and the subordinate clause is here. I've uploaded a page from a book that I used last year, which I really liked. You can see it's got that explanation, slightly similar, sorry, slightly different version of it, but it says the same thing. Exclamation here, and a quite nice example here about the king being angry when he saw the muddy footprints. The main clause, it can be used on its own as a sentence, the king was angry, absolutely. And this is the subordinate clause, when he saw the muddy footprints. It does not make sense on its own. It's less important. So the most important thing about that sentence is that the king was, adi, um, was angry. The extra bit of information is that when he saw the money footprints. You can change that around, as we know, using a comma. So when he saw the money footprints, comma, the king was angry. So you've got getting started. Now try these and then practice your punctuation to be getting on with. If you could please write the whole question out, so it says match each main clause with a subordinate clause, then write the complex sentence you have made. Okay, so everyone started talking when I saw the Pope, although I watered them regularly about the new show, blah, blah, blah. So could you write the whole sentence out, please? Number two, write a subordinate clause to finish each of the sentences. The first one has been done to help you. You don't need to copy out the first one. But it says, the lollipop lady stopped the traffic until... Um, think of something hilarious to put there. Don't make it boring. Until she turned into a rabbit and hopped away. We saw many elephants when we visited Manchester Airport. I don't know, whatever. Okay, so now try these. It gets a little bit harder. Some, sorry, sometimes a subordinate clause is introduced by the pronoun who, when referring to a person, or the pronoun which, when referring to an animal or a thing. So remember, who, when you're referring to a person, like P 
Peter, John, Mr. Dobson, Mrs. Hill, that girl. Or which when you're referring to an animal or an object, dog, box, cat, bottle. So it says here the examples, I found the key which opened the old box. Because key is not a person, so you use which. And Emma wrote to her uncle who had sent her a present. Her uncle is a person, so you use who. So again, which when it's an object or an animal, who when it's a person. So it says Amir is the boy, is that which or who won the first prize. Okay. This last question here is the same, just a bit more extended. And then practice punctuation, this is like what we do in the mornings. Can you please write them out again in your book using your best handwriting, but this time punctuated perfectly? And the very last thing you have to do is underline the main clause and circle the subordinate clause in each sentence. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Any problems? Do let me know. Um, I'll be online. Um, so if you can get into the chat, come and say hello. Once you've done that, please remember that you also have 45 minutes of reading to do. I don't mind if you run out of time and you have to split the reading across the day. So maybe you do 20 minutes this morning and 25 minutes after, after lunch. I don't mind, whichever suits you best. Either way, I hope you get on with this fine. And I'll speak to you at 12 o'clock in the chat. Goodbye.